Hey guys, welcome to the Liberal Hive Mind, a channel solely focused on exposing the abundant hypocrisy of the left. Okay, so here we are again. I guess the tension's a little bit high. It's overreaction season. Can people please take a frickin' chill pill? Over the last couple of weeks, the sky's been falling. I mean, the whiny BS has been on another level. And you know that because all the Ron DeSantis people, all of a sudden last week got an algorithmic boost. Here we go again with the Ron DeSantis fan club. Well, the panic last week was over Kamala Harris, supposedly now spelling doom for the Trump campaign. The end was here to many of these weak-willed people on Twitter, or rather on X. But then, of course, a little bit of time had passed. I guess the nerves were calming down. But now, of course, the sky is falling once again because Joe Rogan said something that's totally not surprising at all. Let's have a conversation about this week's panic. We've got some stuff to get into, so let's roll the tape. All right, folks, so Joe Rogan said a thing. Joe Rogan said something real, real shocking folks. He announced that he would be supporting RFK Jr. over Donald Trump. That's just what they do. That's politics. They do it on the left. They do it on the right. They gaslight you. They manipulate you. They, they promote narratives. And um, the only one who's not doing that is Robert F. Kennedy Jr. You a fan? Yeah, I am a fan. Yeah, he's the only one that makes sense to me. He's the only one that he doesn't attack people. He attacks um, actions and ideas. But he's... Um, He's much more reasonable and intelligent. I mean, the guy was an environmental attorney and cleaned up the East River. I mean, he's, he's a legitimate guy. And people are freaking out on Twitter as if this, oh, it's just the end. It's the end of the Trump campaign. He's losing his celebrity support. Where exactly is this coming from? Either some people are living under a rock, or this is some sort of leftist psyop social media operation, because I don't get what the fuss is about. Joe Rogan's supporting RFK Jr.? Yeah, no S, Sherlock. He's been supporting RFK Jr., and he probably will support RFK Jr. until Mr. Kennedy decides that it's the right time to pull from the race. That isn't surprising at all. Joe Rogan is a Bernie Sanders supporter. And even back in 2020, he refused to endorse Donald Trump. He refused to have him on his show. This is pretty much par for the course. Yet for some reason, I guess the leftist misinformation has kicked in. I guess now left-wing Joe Rogan is perceived as a right-wing figure. You know, say it enough times and it just magically becomes true. The media writes, Alt-right Joe Rogan, alt-right Joe Rogan. They Photoshop his face, looking all sickly and lizard-like. They just keep spamming this photo and writing alt Alt-right, alt-right Joe Rogan, alt-right Rogan. And now I guess we all perceive him as right-wing, but he isn't and never has been. He's closer to a social democrat with maybe slightly conservative tendencies. At least that's been my perception after watching him for so many years. He's not right-wing. He's never been a Trump supporter. I really don't understand why people are making a big deal out of this. They're pretending as if he was a Trump supporter and he's rescinded his support. Where exactly is this coming from and why the panic? You know, people are allowed to express their political views and not everybody needs to support the same candidate that you do. And when a friend or when somebody perceived as friendly comes out with a different opinion, the reaction probably shouldn't be vitriolic. I'm not saying that everybody's doing that, it's obviously a small minority, but come on, you gotta call it for what it is. That's leftist behavior. Joe Rogan is totally entitled to his feelings, his beliefs, whether you agree with them or not, or whether he's right or wrong. He is totally entitled to feel and express himself as he sees fit, and of course to vote how he sees fit. The reaction to that clip has been totally unhelpful. And I guess here's another element of panic that we might as well touch on. People are also panicking at the Trump response. Trump responded with this on Truth Social. It will be interesting to see how loudly Joe Rogan gets booed the next time he enters the UFC ring. MAGA 2024, I'm seeing a lot of people now criticizing Trump, as if Trump's now getting himself in trouble for attacking Joe Rogan. Relax, people, please. I mean, holy moly. It's a freaking joke, not an attack on Joe Rogan. Trump's essentially saying, well, okay, don't endorse me, but I guess let's see what happens. You might get booed at the next UFC event. It's really not that bad of a response. It's not that big of a deal. And actually, funnily enough, Joe Rogan responded to the whole controversy and said this. For the record, this isn't an endorsement. This is me saying that I like RFK Jr. as a person, and I really appreciate the way that he discusses things with civility and intelligence. I think we could use more of that in this world. I also think that Trump raising his fist and saying fight after getting shot is one of the most American effing things of all time. I'm not the guy to get political information from. If you want that from a comic, go to comic Dave Smith. He actually knows what he's talking about. There's no reason to panic. There's no reason to attack Joe Rogan, you know, to act like a MAGA white blood cell. Attacking anybody who isn't directly part of the group, it's okay. Some people are going to be on the fence. The goal is, over the next three months, to bring those people over. Not to antagonize them for voicing a different 
different opinion. It's not like Joe Rogan's on the other side. I mean, for Pete's sakes, this is how he's talking about Kamala Harris on his podcast. Is there any way to you that we're not being gaslit like to hell by Cam- by Kamala Harris? In what way? Like, wasn't she like a joke even among Democrats? Uh huh. Like. 10 seconds ago like literally sure. like a day ago yep and now it's like the country's rallying around i know like, yeah what i don't know i don't yeah, even we're we're so easily manipulated and they're all doing it in lockstep yeah no doubt about it there's no doubt about it she was uh, she polled as the least popular vice president of all time yeah. and now imagine you and me but we're in front of fifteen thousand people that are hanging on our every word and you're kind of free balling and maybe you really haven't even done the research like someone's asking you how you're going to fix the economy <laughs> you're right and then you have some not well the problem is everybody needs money for because the bills and we're working on that like what well and you can that's so obvious when you know with the, the passage of time is significant mm-hmm. and the significance yeah. of the passage of time is significant because of the passage of time exactly yeah so that's someone who is basically like a, a kid in the fifth grade who's writing a book report but they haven't read the book that's every time i see her on camera that's all i can think is that she's the kid who didn't do her homework right because it she just has that vibe did you see the clip of her talking about how how dare we wish merry christmas to people no. Yeah, she she does this bizarre like rant about how we shouldn't be wishing Merry Christmas to anyone. Is this when she was a senator? I don't know. It's recent. It's recent. Yeah. It's, really? It's, it's it's so strange that like that was her like that's the only time I've seen her passionate about anything on camera. Come on, really? Yeah. Was, oh, I haven't seen that. Yeah, no, she I've doesn't. seen the one she was telling that people need to be woke. Everyone needs to be more woke. Oh you yeah. Be more woke. You should figure out who's the wokest. And try to be the wokest, but she's whatever. Everyone should be more woke. And she's like laughing. It's like what the fuck. And when we all sing happy tunes and sing Merry Christmas and wish each other Merry Christmas, these children are not going to have a Merry Christmas. How dare we speak Merry Christmas? How dare we? Merry Christmas, everyone. <laughs> And she invoked Greta Thunberg a little bit there. Oh, that's so nutty. Yeah. How dare we? How dare we? How dare you? Yeah. No, we're definitely being gaslit. Yeah. And not only that, here's here's the big one, right? She wasn't elected. And look, let's add more context. This is how he generally talks about Trump. And the fact that he was the president for four years and the country was in a, a, a great economic situation. Yeah. And it looked like his policies were actually effective and that it looked like the unemployment was down. All business mm-hmm. was building. Regulations were being relaxed. More things were getting done. You know, when you look at it from a policy perspective, if you just look at it on paper, what he did was effective. A lot of people think it was effective. You don't like him as a personality, so you ignore that. Don't do that. Look at it in terms of a policy perspective. People liked the ideas that he was putting forward. The guy's fair. He's had a track record of being fair. And so I think, at least to a certain extent, within the public realm of discussion, he deserves to be treated fairly and not antagonized for walking slightly to the left of us. You know, people are pretending that every little blip on the radar, every little news story, every headline is the end-all be-all. It's going to be the deciding factor. Nobody's going to even remember this stuff in a week. I mean, for Pete's sakes, nobody even talks about Trump getting shot anymore. Let's relax, keep our head on straight, move forward, win people over, not panic, not not act like the leftist cult. That's basically what's on my mind. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure to leave a like and possibly subscribe. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.